So the following is a presentation on strategic open pit mine planning by Chris Jones from Snowden. Snowden was established in 1987 and have grown to a business with 60 plus employees located in Perth, Brisbane and Johannesburg. They have strong capability in resource geology, mine planning, corporate advisory, data management, software development and project management. They deliver the advice to support the industry, the software to embed best practice and train the industry to do better things. Chris has worked in the mining industry since graduating in 2006. Following his initial training with Rio Tinto Iron Ore in Australia, Chris moved to Snowden Consulting, initially in Australia and then in South Africa. Gaining international experience of diverse projects, including project management and completion of scoping, pre-feasibility, bankable pre-feasibility studies, independent technical reviews and due diligence studies for various ore deposits and providing on-site mine planning and mentoring to engineers at underground and open pit operations. It is my pleasure to welcome Chris Jones for strategic open pit mine planning. Chris Jones for strategic open pit mine planning. Okay, uh, going now. Okay, thanks um, for the introduction there. This is it, Chris Jones here. I can skip over part of my first couple of slides there covering Snowden, but as you said, we uh, mostly do resource estimation, mine planning, corporate and training with quite a lot of uh, software sort of things now as well. And working through the data mine. Uh, we currently have our main office here in Perth with uh, several over on the eastern side of Australia and we're expanding out into London recently and all of our associated data mine offices around the world. Yeah, so basically been asked to come and speak about one of the projects we've worked on recently with uh, Studio OP and it was for a bit of a case study on a mine in West Africa. What we were looking for was how we can efficiently and accurately evaluate multiple designs, pushback options, backfill options and schedule options for a project. As was mentioned by our AMC guys earlier, the optimization shells can provide an estimate of staging but it's not necessarily an accurate result in terms of where you will be mining and there are cases where you don't have the step changes required to actually show where you need to go. What we were looking for was the ability to quickly alter pushback designs and literally update the schedule to produce an accurate and realistic result. We wanted to be able to look at the options of whether backfilling was viable, what staging sequence was going to provide the best result, and how we could actually have our accesses to various waste dumps, which you can't do just by scheduling off little shelves. So we needed the ability to actually design things out quickly. For a bit of a background on the project, it was for the uh, Lafigue Gold Project in the Ivory Coast. It's in our West Africa there and has a very highly variable surface topography. And the ore body dips down at a shallow angle below the, <clears throat> below the hills there. The optimization shell showed very large step changes at small revenue factor increments. Basically, once it hit a tipping point and was able to go past the hill, then there was a large difference in the uh, pit shells generated which gave us little to guide the development sequence within those step changes. To actually look at what the best way to mine it, we ended up doing uh, multiple pushback design iterations. Completed the multiple designs through Datamine Studio OP Auto Pit Design, and then we've run the schedule optimizations through Snowden's Evaluator software. Just to give an example there showing uh, what the actual topography of the area looked like and the open pit boundary. And the blue line showing the open pit there. 
And uh, basically the ore body runs along the foot wall of the open pit and dipping down towards the southeast. The outcropping starts in the northwest corner and sort of generally trends in that direction. We had one major hill running through the middle, another area up the top, and another to the southwest. And the variations in that were up to about 60 metres between sort of the pit exits and what was in the centre of the pit. And we needed to have multiple accesses as well because of the room available that we had waste dumps to the northwest. We had some waste dumps coming out on the northeast side and we had room for waste dumps at the bottom. So we had to be able to design something that showed multiple ramps, that having showing actually been able to join the, the haulage routes that were needed for the project. This is just to give a bit of an example of what the actual pit optimization came came out and the step changes that we're seeing in the very small uh, revenue changes. So we're getting to these points where the pit shell would reach the edge of a uh, peak on the topography and then have a very large step coming out afterwards as the strip ratio of every material after that point is lower than what it actually took to get to the next one. And then again, these, <clears throat> these shells align roughly to uh, the step changes here and one of the step changes here. So you can see it was uh, quite flat as it was continuing through the revenue revenue factors and then we go past all the step changes. We tried to use these to guide the initial mining areas, which led us to starting in the northwest, but the actual development between these points required a few different design alterations. So Ali gave a good example of the actual setup, which is what's in uh, this slide here. But the main benefits to me were being able to set up all of that information once at the start of the project, setting up your bench height, setting up your geotech zones, and letting everything be set from a block model and read through. If I wanted to do a different iteration, I didn't have to go through and redo everything from scratch. I could just copy the setup across and then using the same constraints, make slight alterations, move my ramp positions. And it just cuts down the uh, time it takes to actually produce a realistic looking bit design substantially. And where previously it might be taking you know multiple weeks to do detailed designs, I'm saying some of them you can do from days to hours, depending on uh, how accurately you want to get into it. Another good situation with this was the way the already dipped coming down the football was that there was a lot of constraints to be adjusted at the initial point to make sure we're following the all body along. After that point, if I wanted to actually move the ramps around on the hanging wall side, I could just continually use the same constraints on the foot wall, which again, save repetitive work again. Just to show an example of what the pit actually looked like coming out towards the, uh, the final stage we ended up designing. We had multiple exits coming out to be able to access our northwest dump. We had exits coming to the southwest to be able to access that waste dump multiple exits uh, and also an exit coming out to the northeast to access that waste dump. During this process we also looked at the potential to backfill which again required having the ramps in place to see if it would actually work when we've gone to schedule it. As I say, and there's a lot of uh, input connections there for the various stages. Uh, this ended up being eight stage or well, six stages plus two satellite pits which are showing in this deposit in this picture. Just to show a bit of what the uh, final staging ended up looking like and how we could actually use the same constraints as we're developing. So taking each pit that was actually designed to start with and where the walls are stepping back to follow the uh, ore body, we're able to use those, copy them to the next stage, move our ramp around as well as showing in his work before and adjust it to actually get something that fitted together. For these options that are eventually finalised, our first uh, request from the client was, can we evaluate the potential for backfill? And in this case, we have one deeper section of the pit here and a deeper section here. So our first iteration of designs was, can we design something that takes out the southwest portion as early as possible to give us space to backfill? So then we needed to be able to see how that fitted into the remainder of our design and how we could actually schedule it and get a uh, cost comparison. With this project, that didn't actually work well because of the amount of waste having to mine through basically an entire hill just to open up the backfill was not an economic option. 
the other steps we were looking at was how we best progress around the hill as it, in the centre. What we ended up coming with was trying to do a longer narrow pit, which is shown in stage two there, and then eventually coming around the back of the pit before taking out the highest part as late as possible, which kind of makes sense in terms of delaying waste, but we also were trying to maintain a certain amount of equipment fleet while we're doing this. So once we were able to generate the various designs, we ran them through Snowden's evaluator software. The evaluator is a uh, multiple linear, linear programming software that basically classifies <coughs> a bench into various grade bins and then allows us to flag various destinations and it runs an optimization on the actual schedule. So by taking the various pit designs, we had an output template set up within evaluator where you can then assign where material comes from the mine whether it goes to a stockpile or if it goes to a direct feed process or if it goes to the waste dump. It then runs and uh, works out the optimal routing and does an MPV based schedule to give us a comparative point that we could actually look at whether we've uh, produced uh, the, the correct option to take further. For an example, this was ended up being what our stage progression was output after uh, coming out of Evaluator. So it basically works out when we should be stripping waste, trying to generate a consistent profile, and when stages should actually begin mining for the pushbacks based on an MPV basis. Just a couple of examples of what was actually the backfill schedule originally and what ended up being the uh, adjusted schedule afterwards. The backfill one we've seen coming out of the schedule showed way too much waste movements, which is giving us negative uh, cash flows at certain points and peaks of ore mining, but with uh, too high waste movements and an unbalanced equipment fleet. By adjusting the pit designs to maintain the strip ratio to more consistent values, we were able to smooth out the overall cash flow. It was managed to maintain a uh, more consistent strip ratio, which led to the, uh, the equipment fleet size being maintained. And overall, between those, we end up with about a 10% improvement from the project MPB. Okay. Um, yeah, so in conclusion, the, it's basically having a lot more tools available now that allowed us to do increasingly uh, efficiently and accurately analyze different options. So as mentioned before, previously we've just run a little shell, add 10% onto it for waste, and use that as the base case. Now we're actually able to put designs together relatively quickly, run them through various scheduling optimizers, and make a decision on something that actually can be used to go forward from there. And so we've used multiple iterations of design through Studio P, and we did multiple iterations of the schedule through Evaluator. The operation tool of the tools is still very important. It's one of the older gentlemen we work with, likes to constantly tell me that all the software solutions have potential to make very elegant mistakes, which basically just means us mining engineers are still required for now. You can't just press a button and run the whole thing through.